Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, Talk Tuesday. Small group today. Newton? The bird is saying no. Thank you. Um, small group today, only eight. And uh, we're here at the straight road because we are working on some things with one of the dogs. So who do we have here? We've got Vanguard. Oh, and I almost dropped you guys. I'm sorry. Vanguard Tucker. We've got Newton back there. Kronk. Hamish. Ah! What are you doing? Oh, it's a stick. That's fine. Carry on. Good boy, Cozzy. Cosmo. Luna. Nova, who's desperately trying to carry a heavy stick. And Phoebe. Um. Out. Move it along. And uh, Luna, as you can see, is the one that we're working on stuff with. So she had a medical condition and has been off for, oh, since like April, May, somewhere in there. Um, she's all healed now. But because she was on such a long break and because it was a medical condition that limited her physical activity, um... Her first day back was eventful. That was last Tuesday. That's why I didn't film a video last Tuesday as I needed both hands. So we have progressed. We're now um, not required to be in a heel with me the whole time. So she's at the end of a slip leash and just doing whatever. And uh, we'll finish out the week like this. And then next week you'll see her on a slightly longer leash still attached to me. Um, and then we'll make our way up the ranks. Yeah, it's a caterpillar, guys. Poor little caterpillar. That's slimed on by Kronk. Um, Nova in front. Come on. Just giving up the stick, I see. Apparently, the sticks today smell very good, according to the pack. You know, in case you wanted to know. <laughs> in case you wanted to know the things that I know. Okay. Um, a couple weeks ago, I started on some questions, and I definitely didn't get to all of them, so... We're going to try a couple more today. Um, and one of them, I guess someone had watched some of my past videos and noticed the sort of different leashes I use. Um, and why do I do that? And the simple answer is because I'm holding the dogs accountable. God, smoke just got spooked by a grasshopper. Um, I'm holding them accountable to the knowledge and training they have. Newton, that's a hard no. Thank you. Um, hold on, two, four, six, seven, Hamish, good. Oh, did I finish the, was Hamish in that? I don't know. I don't know what's going on today, guys. I'm still catching up on sleep, I feel like, from the past week or two. Uh, anyways, focus, leashes. So, like, Luna's a good example right now. She's attached to me, and she's attached to me just on a simple slip leash. Um, and it allows her a little bit of freedom. Like you can tell she's smelling, she's checking out the other dogs, but without the ability to make bad choices, which is what she started off doing last Tuesday. Um, like I gave her the opportunity to sort of slip in where she always had been and it was too much for her, which is like totally normal, right? She was really amped, she was super excited. She was not in a good state of mind to make good life choices. Right? So knowing that, I had a leash on her. And then when I did allow her quote unquote off leash, she was still on a long line just in case, which proved necessary, right? So I use a variety of different length leashes, which you can typically tell by color. Like I know by color who's got what. Um, but if I were like just focused on my own animal, what I would do is I would get the longest long line I could. Um, because through most of it, like you're holding it. Nope. Thank you. Um, through most of your training, you're holding it, right? So you just hold it to the length, like I knot the line at different lengths. So I just count how many knots I'm letting out. And the idea behind it, as I mentioned in the last video, 
is just to have consequences no matter how far away. Tucker, Hamish McBean. I don't care what the smell is. You're not rolling in it. He's like, you don't know. You don't know about the smells, lady. Thank you, sir. Um, and if you're wondering about the bean, usually dogs I've had since they were puppies end up being called like Nova Bean, Hamish McBean. These are all, this is how it happens. Anyways, leashes. So it's to make sure, and the e-collar works the same way, right? Hold on, plane. I'm assuming that doesn't make for the best audio. There we go. Okay. So, like most dogs can figure out what radius they have to be in to behave. And then if they're out of that radius, that they can do whatever they want. Um, and this is sort of why when we do lifestyle training um, that I focus on not just good obedience, but making good life choices. Because you can have the most obedient dog in the world and then you offer them freedom choices and they're terrible. Like, that just means you've sort of overcompensated in one area and need to lean a little bit to the other. Um, and part of that is making it clear to the dogs that it doesn't matter how far away they are from you, consequences still happen and they're still gonna be held accountable to their training. So, Kronk, thank you. Um, so what does that mean? So like here, we're gonna watch Luna for a little bit. So when I say offer a correction, this is the correction. Good girl, okay. All right, a little bit of pressure on the leash. She looks at me, that's all I want. There's no anger involved, there's no emotion. If there's a command to be issued, I do issue it, like an out or anything like that. Next week I'll try to show you what a recall looks like. That being said, her recall is on point. Her recall is great. It's more just her manners with the other dogs and her like level of anxiety that we're working on. Um, See, like, and she's pretty good, so she's not gonna offer me a good opportunity, but we'll keep an eye on her just in case. So initially, like last week, for example, if Kronk had run by like that, she would have tried to run by even knowing she's attached to me, right? So we had to have a discussion about that, but clearly she's better. And like, if she keeps walking like this at this length, then next week I will have her on a slightly longer leash because she can handle this length. She can likely handle the next, oh no, I just realized something. Kronk, did you go in the mud pit? Oh, you didn't, good boy. Oh, well, maybe you did, it's hard to tell with you, but you didn't drag anyone else with you. So I'll take it as a win. Where's Tucker though? Oh no, Tucker's still white. Okay, we're good, we're clear. Oh, brief panic there. Um. So like next week I'll put her on the 10 foot line and I will still have it in my hand. That's the important part, right? Is we're working on this. So the line is still attached to me. The line is still something I can easily grab um, to enforce the rules. And then the week after longer line until she's at like a 40 or 50 foot, then usually dragging because at 40 or 50 feet, I can usually grab it if necessary pretty easily. Um, and then gradually I'll fade the other way. Now, with certain dogs, um, like you guys know, with Kronk, very quickly when he was a pup, I transitioned from a long line to, oh, turn, turn spot. Um, very quickly to an e-collar. And that's because Kronk has a crazy ability 
to hog tie himself in 2.5 seconds. Um, and like some dogs you'll see, it'll wrap around their legs or something and they'll kick it off and stuff like, Kronk does not do that. He just would hog tie himself. And if there was another dog with him, he would hog tie that other dog. So obviously safety being an issue, e-collar made much more sense um, because it is basically like an invisible long line. And even you can see to this day, he still wears it. Kronk, he doesn't need it. In fact, I rarely use it, but it's one of those things where like, if I need it, I need it to be there, right? So Newton, could you not maybe? Thank you. Um, and all the dogs you see here have gone through the same thing. Like they've all gone through long lines. Kronk, absolute no. I might've missed it the first time, but I'm paying attention now. So you and your smelly mud are just gonna have to deal with not being reunited. Um, two, four, six, seven. Phoebe! In front, please. Okay. Two, five, six, eight. Perfect. Um, all of them have gone through the same thing. Uh, a couple of them are e collar trained, like Cosmo is e collar trained. Um, Tucker is, though he hasn't worn one for years. Um, Phoebe's e-collar trained, but same thing. She hasn't, uh, now. Will I still put any color on her? Yeah, if I notice her energy is weird. Or, Newton, don't you do it. Good boy. Um, if I notice her energy is weird, or we're going to a place where she hasn't gone before or hasn't been in a while, um, I will throw an e-collar on her. Um, because she is a bolter. In front, let's go, kids. That means you too, Terrier. <laughs> it's your little bouncy ears. Um, yeah. So that's sort of why, is until they're like 110% on their recall and they're out. Cosmo, thank you. Um, then they're not off a training tool, period. So a good example was like when we first got here, there was a cyclist coming down and uh, I have a couple of friends that are big cyclers and my aunt's a big cyclist, and like hearing some of their horror stories about off-leash dogs chasing them is just like <laughs> boggles my mind. So all I, like Luna obviously attached me, I don't have to worry about her too much. But all I did was when he was within a certain distance, I recalled everybody. I made sure I got them off the path. I had them in sits and we just stayed in a sit until he went by. And uh, it was very sweet because he looked at me dead in the eye and he's like, thank you so much. And I was like, well, of course, I'm not that guy. <laughs> like, I'm not just gonna not do anything about my dogs. It's my responsibility, not just to keep the dogs safe, but to make sure that they're not going to make anyone else unsafe. Uh, Feebles, thank you. In front, please. Thank you. Good girl. Um, yeah, so that's sort of our long line chat, I guess. Good boy. Now I will, oh, and I'm dropping you again. I'm sorry, guys. Got a new phone case because my other one broke. And the stupid pop socket is like, it's still new and it, uh, anyway, I'll work on it. I promise not to drop you next week. Um, so yeah, I guess that's this week's chat. A single question again. I'll get through them at some point. But uh, as per always, if you guys have any questions about this or any other video, you know what to do. Otherwise, I hope you guys are having as much fun as your dogs are. It's a very sniffy walk today. Not so much with the zoomies. Newton, Cosmo, and Kronk. I think I know what's there. Where are we? Yeah, I know exactly what's there. Where are my rollers? I see you. I see you. Yep. Thank you. Nova, same thing. Thank you. 
it's that shoulder drop. As soon as you see the shoulder drop. That being said, I do think he got some on him. It's hard to tell. I'll have to investigate that when I get back to the car. Okay. Um, yeah. So I hope you guys are having a great day and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Cheers.